to 40 Under 40 Business Achievement Awards. Let's uh, start with introducing yourself. All right, my name's Matt Hill, uh, director and founder of Niagara Youth Flag Football. Amazing, yep. so let's talk about that. So okay. you're the founder, yep. how did you start your business? So about three, four years ago, um, I noticed in Niagara there was no flag football, just tackle. Back in Hamilton, flag football's huge, like three to 4,000 kids playing. And there was nothing and you know with concussions and injuries i'm like the kids need another avenue especially at a younger age so we just got the ball rolling literally um, i've been involved in tackle football at all levels and we started about four three and a half four years ago um, with about 60 kids and now we're over 600 um, and yeah we just keep going so <laughs> i love that yeah so are you a winner or a your yes, so I'm a winner, a, re a recipient, winner, whatever we call yeah. Yeah, uh, of it. So, uh, which is very humbling and uh, honoring. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So, what advice would you give to anybody who is thinking about becoming an entrepreneur or a business owner? How did you start that off? It's a lot of work. Um, I also work full time at the Hotel De Shaver Hospital. Wow. At the time, this was just kind of something small, do for fun on the side, and it told in, turned into a full on business. And I think the biggest thing is you got to be able to adapt. You got to roll with the punches, and you got to lean on people. You can't think you know everything. You know what I mean? There's so many great minds. I got a lot of good friends and supporters, coaches, um, website design, whatever it is, just tapping into all markets and uh, just rolling with the punches, especially with the pandemic in there for two and a half years. Um, and just putting in a lot of work. There's, you know, and now I'm finding out you, I can't let me put off the gas. So we're going year round now. We started with just one season a year. Now we're three, four seasons. We got travel teams going all over, uh, clinics, camps, all kinds of stuff. So. So what were your biggest mistakes that you learned so you could tell other people to definitely avoid? I think the biggest thing is when you're getting started, invest in yourself, invest in the company, invest in what you want to do. Um, I don't know that there was you know minor mistakes in that area, but it'll come back around if you put the time and the work in. So the little things of you know going out with a group of people, you pick up the tab, and you know you you know you're meeting with people, you're picking minds, and it'll all come back in the wash. And you know you just don't worry about those things. Just think big picture. Like I'm gonna get there, even though at the time I didn't know what the big picture was. We just kept plugging away at it. So it's definitely a mindset thing. Did you ever feel like you had like major imposter syndrome? A little bit, yeah. It was like, what am I doing? You know, I've been around football. I'm very comfortable in that environment, but never, always just a coach, right? I've always just coached. It was never like, you know, now you're in charge of 50, I got 60 coaches and staff and all these things happening. So it went from just a coach to like, oh wow, like everything, you know, you're kind of in charge of everything. So definitely has its moments. You know, you go to the field and you see like 600 kids at two parks and you're like, how do we get to here? But it's okay, it's all good. Take a deep breath and away we go. So you talked about the pandemic earlier. Let's bring that up because especially with children and sports, especially touching or yes. even if it's just flag, that must have been a huge pivotal moment for you guys. So let's talk about how you got from that yep. and what you did to get to where you are today. You nailed it. That was a tricky one. I mean, year one, we were at 60 kids. Year two was a pandemic. Um, there were so many protocols we had to have in place, you know, hand sanitizer, washing the balls, no handshaking at end of games, like just awkward things. Yeah. You know, for the while, coaches were wearing masks. Um, you know, come, again, coming from a healthcare background, you can respect that and appreciate it. And, but it was tough, right? For these kids, it was a lot. Um, but we, again, we just have a lot of great people, positive people. At the end of the day, too, as things became normal, again, whatever normal is, you know, their choice, right? To kids, yeah. you know, if you're comfortable with a mask on, that's okay. And everyone has the choice. And, you know, we, had a lot of parameters in place. You know, on a typical night, we would have about 100 kids an hour on the field. Well, through the pandemic, that was down to 20. So financing got tricky and just kind of, again, rolling with things. How are we going to adjust, adapt? And uh, we, you know, got through the pandemic. And we had one season in the heat of things. We had 300 kids. We finished the season, went locked down two, three, four, whatever it was. Um, and then we kind of got out of it. And we just kept steamrolling, kept going, building momentum. And uh, we haven't looked back. And like I said, we're up to over 600 kids now. And hopefully that's a distant memory. And, you know, you see the kids out there being normal and shaking hands and being kids. And, you know, if they're spitting on their hands in the middle of football, right. they're not weird. It's normal. Like, and just trying to make the best of it. So Amazing. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Congratulations on winning 40 under 40. And we'll be seeing you inside. Awesome. Thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate it. <laughs> of thank course. You. Thank you.